So many cars that I fixed in my life. Those are my best memories. I just want to fix your car up right. That will be the best therapy for me. Hey, hey. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. All right. Today we're going to use this Ansel battery charging starter system tester. I actually don't use the tool until about 6.50 in the video, so skip ahead if you don't want to hear a bunch of dorky mechanic humor because there's going to be some of that here. Anyway, I decided to get this um, thing because it's about $70. It's a little bit more precise than the Harbor Freight tester I usually use that I've been using for like 10 years. And you will see in the video why I decided to get this one. It had pretty good reviews and it was much cheaper than the Midtronics tester, which is what I used to use when I worked at the dealership. When I worked at a Honda dealership, most dealerships, they have a Midtronics like this one with the printer already on it because they use the printer for warranty and a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm not spending that much. Let's not go crazy or, and even the some of the other ones are still kind of pricey. So I decided to go a little bit cheaper than, or a little bit more expensive than my old school tester that I have here. And this one works too, but you'll see uh, there's a couple things that it doesn't measure. But it's pretty reliable. It's basically just a giant resistor. And you put, and it, you can use it to put a load on. So that's what I would use for my first tester if you don't have anything. And yeah, sometimes old school analog is all you need. And that is true. But, and Happy says it's easy to use. So there you go. So anyway, this is the amazing dorky story of how this repair came to happen. This is an actual repair. So I actually use it. So anyway, I'm on Facebook trolling people because that is the best use of my time is to troll random people on Facebook. <laughs> I was, I've been trolling people on the internet since the internet started. So, anyway, this guy's trying to <laughs> sell a 12 year old computer that he tried to install the most recent version of Windows on and it can't take it. And it said something went wrong. Yeah, yeah, something went wrong. All right. So, anyway, he broke this computer trying, <laughs> trying to do it. And then I pretend like I want it. So, I said, Does this computer play solitaire? That's all I need and I'll be happy. <laughs> And then he put yes. And I was like, all right, sweet. I'm going to ask my girlfriend if I could have this for my birthday present. <laughs> I don't know how he kept falling for this. So uh, so then this guy, Daniel, was like, you need to tell people that this computer is broken and you can't use it for anything. Like, like I, troll, I ended up trolling John and Daniel. <laughs> so, so John is like, like, wait a minute, man. Don't rip this guy mic off. This is not funny. Is you just go to Walmart and get anything other than a broken PC for a hundred dollars? <laughs> so he said, just amend the post to include its tr true condition. So then I start getting concerned. I'm like, wait a minute, is this computer going to be able to play solitaire or not? I need to know the truth. <laughs> then Brandon's, Brandon gets it. He's like, yeah, solid burn way. <laughs> Then I said, John, I'm sorry for putting pressure on you, but I need to play. My girlfriend wants to play solitaire as quickly as possible. Can you fix this computer? <laughs> so I could play solitaire. Then he, now he says, all right, I'll install Windows 7, which is an older version of Windows. And it will have solitaire. And it'll be the price listed. I think he put $99. <laughs> and then I put, my girlfriend has a concern. Can you give us a warranty? We, will, we don't want to be playing solitaire together having a romantic date and then the computer doesn't work <laughs> so then he says okay i could do warranty so i'm like sweet score so and then i said i, I met my girlfriend at the li library playing solitaire on a computer and i'm going to propose to her while we're playing solitaire on this new computer so i'm gonna pay you 99 cents that you listed it for <laughs> and then finally john figured it out that i'm trolling him and he deleted the post <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i'm still on facebook 
And um, I'm just randomly scrolling around. My friend's wife uh, put this put this shirt on here, and it says "Stay Golden." So I was like, I think I won't buy this T-shirt because um, I think it looks pretty cool, and it's a good summer shirt. And I could wear my gold sunglasses with it. And then uh, <laughs> it reminds me of Step Brothers, where the lady's like, "Stay Golden, Pony Boy." <laughs> But it doesn't say Pony Boy. I don't want it to say that. But just stay golden is close enough, I think. So anyway, this is my friend's wife t-shirt store on Etsy. The link's in the description. Uh, me and my friends, we all have side businesses or main businesses, and we try to support each other. This is an unpaid uh, plug. But anyway, she makes cool shirts. She made the shirts for my handyman business, so. I bought that Stay Golden shirt. Anyway, I'm back on the internet now. I'm back on Facebook looking for somebody else to troll. And then I find uh, something better to do with my time. Somebody put a request for help from a mechanic. And she can't afford to get her car diagnosed. It looks like the battery's bad. But she said that she had the battery tested. And the battery tested okay. Now she wants to know how to test the alternator. And these people in my town, I don't know, they were very nice, but I think maybe they're living in a time warp from 30 years ago. So they tell her to take the positive terminal off the battery and see if the car's still running. And that's how you check the alternator. But that is a terrible, terrible idea because in any car, <laughs> modern cars, you know, made from 1985 on approximately, if you do that, you could cause damage to the car's computer, and that is real, and that I'm not trolling here. I'm, like, being serious. So I'm like, look, just bring the car over to my house. I'll fix it for free. Just let me make a video about it, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what's, we'll try to figure out what's wrong with your car. So that is what we've been doing. All right, so enough jibber-jabber. Let's actually try to fix a car and stop messing with people trying to sell 15-year-old broken computers. So make sure that the connections are nice and tight. The hold down is still on there. Now the car's running right now. And running, it should usually be 13.5 to 15 volts at the battery while it's running. Okay. Don't take the, the powders, the terminals off while it's running. Just test them. Now the car's off. Now we test the battery. It's weak already. And we put a load on with the button. Now it says replace. Old school testers aren't playing around. They're like, look, replace this battery, stop playing around. But uh, new school testers, they will want you to give it a chance. We'll try to charge it first. Yeah, okay. Anyway, this the Ansel. Here we go. Let's enter. And in the vehicle, battery test, obviously. So turn the headlights on for 10 Seconds to take off the surface charge. The Medtronic's one white makes you do this too. So that's a good sign. D D D and regular it's a regular flooded battery. We're gonna use CCA, which is cold cranking amps on the battery. It says seven hundred. So we're gonna put seven hundred in the tester. Oh, I'm drinking water, excuse me. So there we go. We're gonna measure state of health. SOH 5% out of 100 this is just terrible. You should just fail at 5% out of 100. State of charge zero. <laughs> this is zero charge. So, yeah, this battery is done. I don't care. We're not going to try to charge it. I think they already tried to charge it. Anyway, yeah, state of charge is important. See how much charge it has. State of health is how much it can receive a charge. And in the instructions, you know. Even down to 19, I'll say good recharge. Like, there's no set spec on when you should replace it. So state of health 3, state of health 0, bad cell. Yeah, even the Medtronics, only time it'll tell you just, just replace it, usually if it's a bad cell. Any other time it'll say try to charge it. Then you try to charge it and it usually doesn't work. Like, unless you just accidentally left the lights on once. If it just keeps needing a charge, keep needing a charge, just replace the friggin' battery. Stop playing around. Even I'm super cheap, and even I will tell you that. You don't want to be sitting somewhere, and you can't get home because you didn't replace your battery. So, yeah, look, we tried to do the start and test. It won't even start. <laughs> then we tried to, to charge. We tried to jump it, and it won't jump either. <laughs> 
So, so yeah, it's too, it's too far going. Just replace it. It wouldn't even take it. We tried to jump it like three times with jumper cables and with this jump pack and it's not doing nothing. So I said, let's just go get a battery. Stop playing around. And she's like, I thought it didn't need a battery. I was like, then, you know, the people at AutoZone, the thing tells them to charge and retest, you know, and it'll let you charge it for an hour and then it might pass. But just replace it. Get the charge and retest as old. It's not working. Just replace it. So we went and got a new battery. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And then they told, they somebody told her you can't test the charging system because it's got a side post battery, which is nonsense. <laughs> of course, you could test the charging system with side post battery. Anyway, take that hold down off. Make sure your battery has a hold down. That's a safety requirement. I used to fail people for safety inspection in Philly when they didn't have that. That's what, because you're supposed to fail them. The battery moving around, it could ground out and cause a fire or something. So yeah, I used this side terminal tool. It's only five bucks. Just get one. Then I got, oh, my battery lifter tool. I got that from Harbor Freight over 10 years ago, and it still works. Definitely get one of those. It makes putting in batteries so much easier. Look at that, because they don't all have handles. Yeah, move that leaf too, or the repair will be, repair won't work if there's a leaf there. So yeah, put it in there. Then you hand thread the little side terminal things on. Then you tighten them down. Not too tight, just tight enough. There you go. I know there's a nerd that's going to be in the comments like, Hey, what's the torque spec on that side terminal? It's guten tight. That's the torque spec. This is German, actually. Guten tight. There we go. Nice and snug. And put the little battery hold down back. If you don't have one, you will. You have to get one. Or I'll never, I'll never be your friend. If I see you on the street, I'm not going to buy you an ice cream cone. That's a promise. So there we go. Tighten it down. There we go. Nice and good. Nice and good. Here we go. All right. So now we can test the battery in the charging system with our fancy pants and cell in vehicle battery test. Surface charge. I just uh, turn the headlights on again for 10 whole seconds. There we go. Then turn them off. La la la. Regular flooded CCA. And this one is actually 600 coal cranking amps. We did look up the spec in the little book in Walmart and it says 600 is the spec. So the other one was a little bit above spec, which is okay. But we just went with the spec this time because it costs a little less. All right, state of health, 100. State of charge, 8. I noticed that once the battery's on the shelf for a little while, it will test like this when you first put it in. But um, once it starts and gets a nice drive, it'll it'll charge up and it'll be all right. Just trust me. I know what I'm talking about. I played high school football. I know the score. That's from Al Bundy. Anyway, all right, so yeah. Now it'll, now we could do the cranking test, and it cranks, so that's good, and it starts. Now we could do the charging test. The test for Ripple, it's good to test for Ripple. The other, the Harbor Freight tester won't test for Ripple. Ripple is, to put it simply, the alternator is making AC voltage, <coughs> and it wants to change it into DC voltage before it leaves the alternator because your battery is a DC battery and your electrical system is DC. So that's what it, and if the ripple is bad, that means AC voltage is getting too much, is getting out of the alternator and it's not changing while it's in there and that could hurt the battery. So that is why I like this new fancy tester a little bit better than the Harbor Freight tester. The Harbor Freight is just looking at voltage, DC voltage only. So, only once in a while, r diode ripple will be an issue. It's not happen all the time, but I like having both of these testers anyway. So charging system test.
increase it to 2500 RPMs, hold it for 10 seconds, test it. Might have somebody else do this part for you. Have somebody else t uh, get on the gas. So yeah, Ripple was not that high. And it's good. Yay! Everybody's happy now. And we'll test it with the old one. This is the charging system test, and it is within spec with the old one too. So both testers are testing good. Everybody's happy. Everybody was smiling. Now she could do the DoorDash job without having to charge the battery every five seconds. So yeah, I like the Ansel one. It was working pretty good. Um, it might not be as sturdy if you're using it every day in a shop, but you know, for at home use, it should be all right. Anyway, uh, any electronic tester, even the Medtronics, it used to just say, hey, try to charge it, try to charge it. No, if you didn't charge it once, just replace it. You, you don't want to be at home or, you know, somewhere dark and now your bet car won't start. Just replace the battery. Why risk it? Anyway, thank you for tuning in and have a good one.